In this nucleophilic addition reaction, we're taking a ketone and we're treating it with hydrocyanic acid to generate a cyanohydrin. And this reaction is really important because we are forming a carbon-carbon bond. Whenever we can uh, form those types of bonds, that's a really important thing in organic chemistry. Another cool feature about this reaction, not only are we forming the carbon-carbon bond, but we have this nitrile. And we can take that nitrile functional group and convert it into other functional groups. So adding that piece gives us more opportunity to perform chemistry on this particular molecule. Now with these conditions here, this is going to be done in water. And this reaction goes very, very slow. And the reason why it goes very slow is because you need to have the cyanide anion in order for this reaction to work. And hydrocyanic acid is a weak acid. So when you put that cyanic acid there in water, equilibrium is going to favor the starting material by a pretty large margin. And so we would have this species right here plus our hydronium. So when you add the hydrocyanic acid to water, equilibrium is going to favor this side by, let's say, I don't have an exact number, just by a lot, okay? And so you only have very little of this. And it's that species that you need in order to do the reaction. And the mechanism is like this. So we, if we have this species in solution here, we can take that negative charge there. Let's draw in the lone pairs there. And you can see that we have electron-rich, electron-poor carbon, and that can come in like that, making sure those two lone pairs are shown. Let's actually fix that, because this process is reversible. And that's going to generate that species right there. All right, now what was that step that we've just invoked there? That is a nucleophilic addition. There's our nucleophilic addition step. Now we have our alkoxide. And what are we going to do next here? Well, because equilibrium favors this side so much, we have a acid here. So we could invoke also that this alkoxide right here is going to do a proton transfer, taking that lone pair there, going like that, to generate our final product. But look at what else is generated, another cyanide. So that can then proceed to do another reaction. So if this reaction right here is so slow, is there a way to speed it up? And yes, there is. So you can add potassium cyanide right there, and that's going to speed up the reaction. Why? Because when you take potassium cyanide and put it into water, what is it going to do? It's going to dissociate. It will dissociate into its ions. And so now we have just a higher concentration of cyanide. But at the end of the reaction, do you see how we, we would regenerate more of our cyanide when you look at the mechanism here? So when you add a catalytic amount 
of your potassium cyanide, you're generating more of this to get the reaction going. Another thing that you could do, so to, let's back up. So those are perfect conditions to make this reaction happen. Our hydrocyanic acid, some water, and potassium cyanide in catalytic amounts. That will get the reaction to go. Or, instead of adding the potassium uh, cyanide, you can add sodium hydroxide. Now, why would that make the reaction work a little bit faster? Is because now, when you have sodium hydroxide present, we have a strong base, and then that strong base can be used to generate more of this. And so with those reaction conditions, we would generate water. So those conditions also speeds up the reaction. And why does the, that work? Because we are generating more of this. And that piece then it can start right here. Pretty slick. So that is the mechanism of cyanohydrins.